Many Lionel collectors and operators consider 1954 to be the greatest year for Lionel's post-war toy train production. And this whimsical vehicle, the number 50 section gang car, usually just called the gang car, was part of that 1954 lineup and ran for the next decade. It provided action and whimsy to any layout at an inexpensive price. Retailing for just $7.95 in 1954, that's about 90 bucks in 2023 dollars, nearly any kid with a paper route could save his pennies to add the number 50 to their collection. Hello again, this is Mike with Toy Train Tips and Tricks. Real railroads use all sorts of self-propelled trucks, tractors, and other units to transport workers and their tools where they need to be on the railroad. Although I've never seen a prototype that looks quite like this Lionel version. This speeder rushes three workers to their work site, although no one seems to be driving. Furthermore, OSHA and the FRA would surely disapprove of the olive worker's position on top of the speeder. While he always faces the direction of travel, his whiplash-inducing spin when the vehicle changes direction is something to behold. Maybe that's why he's green. He has motion sickness. At least there's a guardrail on the back of the gang car to keep him from flying off. The direction of the number 50 is controlled by the position of the bumper plate. When the car strikes an object, the bumper plate moves and the motor, along with the olive man, changes direction. If the bumper plate does not push all the way over, the speeder will stop. The number 50 will navigate turnouts and crossovers, but you have to turn up the throttle and gain enough momentum to allow the single pickup roller to pick up power on the other side of the dead spot. But running ridiculously fast and watching the spinning man defy the laws of physics is all part of the fun with this speeder. This example was made between 1960 and 1964. Earlier models had bumper brackets in a U-shape holding the rubber bumpers on from below. Some of the earliest models from 1954 had gray bumpers and the colors of the workers were reversed. Early production also had a two-piece horn centered on the front of the speeder. Over the years, models came either with or without the Circle L and number 50 marking. There seems to be no particular pattern of this based on production years. I picked up this speeder at a show for $15. I thought it was an excellent price as most speeders that you find under $25 have missing men or bumpers or other problems. When I tested it on the layout, it did run, but it sparked like crazy and I knew that the brushes needed to be replaced. And did they ever. When I took the motor apart, the brushes literally disintegrated in my hands. So here's a prime opportunity to take this one apart, clean it, and do some basic maintenance. With the easily accessible motor and plenty of available replacement parts, the number 50 is one that even the most inexperienced tinkerer can clean and maintain. By the way, the number 50's mechanism shares many characteristics with other Lionel self-propelled bump-and-go vehicles, such as the number 60 trolley and the number 52 fire car. The single axle drive is also similar to the very cheapest Lionel FAs and NW2s offered in the 1960s. The number 50 uses the same armature and brush plate as Lionel's post-war whistle tenders. This time it's attached to a worm gear to provide two-wheel drive on the front axle. The rear axle is just along for the ride. I initially filmed my restoration and repair, but camera malfunction made that footage unusable, so I'll walk you through the process, but keep in mind that this speeder was far filthier than this when I began. Remove the two screws on the top front of the speeder to access the motor assembly. Then, pull the top of the speeder up and forward to expose the armature and brushes, but be careful not to sever the two wires attached to the brushes. They can be a pain to reattach. I cleaned the commutator plate with electrical cleaner on cotton swabs. It took about a dozen swabs or so to get all of the grime off. Then, using the same method, along with some generic wet wipes, I cleaned up as much gunk as possible from inside the Moser casing. I recommend trying to leave the armature in place during cleaning, there's a collection of washers and bearings underneath the armature that are easily lost and having any of the parts go missing or get stacked in the wrong order can be catastrophic for your motor. Now it's time to replace the brushes. 
This model uses a small brush type with an attached spray. First, push the spring onto the small end of the brush, then insert the assembly into the brush holder, then repeat for the other side. I did carefully pull the armature assembly out and remove some 60-year-old caked-on grease and added a new bit of white lithium grease to the gear. I was careful to look for any of the small parts that may have decided to wander off. Now the fun part. To reassemble the front housing, we must make sure that the brushes do not fall out of their slots and the armature does not fall from its place. So, with the brushes in place, I turn the model 90 degrees and align the armature shaft with its hole and align the screw holes as well. Sometimes this goes easily and other times not so much. If anyone has a better method, please let us know in the comments. With everything aligned, I replace the two screws to secure the front housing in place. I also disassembled and cleaned the rear of my speeder. First, remove the three rubber workers by gently pulling upward. Now remove the Phillips screw holding the rear casing of the speeder and lift the housing off. In the center of the frame, just behind the motor, is a rectangular metal plate. This contact plate receives track power and regulates the direction of the speeder. Remove the two mounting screws and carefully turn the plate over. Again, be sure the attached wires stay connected. Make sure the two contact pins, as well as the contact spring underneath, are clean. Also, at this time, clean the old gunky grease off the pinion rod that controls the rotation of the worker and replace it with some new white lithium grease. Again, using wet wipes and cotton swabs, clean as much of the old gunk from this area as possible. The plastic housing can be taken to a sink for a good thorough cleaning. When you're satisfied with your cleaning and lube, reverse the process to reassemble the rear housing. But I'm not finished yet. The roller pickup on this model was terribly pitted from years of arcing, so I replaced it as well. Usually, to remove an old rivet, I simply cut off one side and the rivet releases freely. In this case, no matter how hard I pulled and prodded, the rivet did not want to let go. So, I decided if you can't beat them, join them. I carefully bent the outside arms of the roller holder so that the old roller would slide off and the new roller would slide on. I then carefully straightened the arms. If at some point the old rivet decides to give up, I have a replacement rivet in my parts box. I also cleaned the pickup arm while I had the opportunity. Be sure to add a bit of light grease to the sides of the new pickup roller and also to the unit's axles while you have the chance. And don't forget to add some light oil to the armature shaft as well. Then, simply put the figures back in place, and you're done. A clean unit with new brushes and pickup roller. This game car is ready for another half century of service. The number 50 proved so popular that it was cataloged for a decade in the post-war era, and has since been re-released frequently. Sometimes like the original, and sometimes with a, a new twist. In any case, this crowd-pleasing unit makes a fun and inexpensive addition to any layout, whether on the main line or on a short display track. And as you can see, it's easy to maintain as well. As always, I hope you enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed making it, and if so, please like the video, subscribe to the channel, and leave us a comment about your number 50 gang car or other Lionel self-propelled units. So keep your gang together, keep the trains running, and we'll catch you next time on Toy Train Tips and Tricks.